I've made lots of speeches uh, in my life. I've talked to lots of conferences. And um, this one I find very difficult. And I find it difficult because there is so much here that makes me very happy, so much that I think is really terrific. Uh, the work you do is so great. And uh, at the same time, I'm very worried. I'm very worried about the people of the desert. I'm very worried about the way they are treated. I'm very worried about the way government works. And I'm worried about the effect that has on the important people, the people of the desert, who I think are such wonderful people and such an important part of Australia. So I'm trying to balance up how to uh, talk about those things in a way which uh, emphasises the importance of what you are doing and how significant it is and how positive it is, how, how important it is to the whole of Australia and perhaps to the whole world, at the same time to be realistic about the difficulties that you face. Because I've been asked to talk about the government side of things and it's on the government side of things, I guess, that I'm very worried and concerned. I'm talking to you from Noongar country, Wajak country. And that's uh, like Australia, very different from other parts of Australia. I've had the good fortune to be shown country in the Spinifex area in the great Victoria desert, that Junjunjara mob took me around their country. I've had the good fortune to go out with the Maru and be shown their country and the work they're doing on their country. I've had the good fortune to spend time in Central Australia and to go around the mobs there and see what their country is like and how important it is to them. I've been on Cape York, I've been in Western New South Wales, I've been pretty much right across this country. And I've been lucky enough to do that in the company of traditional owners and they've given me a little bit of understanding, just a little bit of that link between traditional owners and their country. And it's given me a deep respect for that. I think it's a really wonderful thing and it's an important part of what makes Australia, Australia. And I think the really marvellous thing about uh, what's happened over the last oh, 30, 40 years is that you have been able, you and your parents and your grandparents have been able to get an acknowledgement of that connection to country. When I was a young man, before I had any white hair, uh, the connection to country was not really acknowledged in any strong way. If Aboriginal people were in the way, they were told to buzz off, just get out of the way get out of the way of the pastoral industry, get out of the way of the mining industry, get out of the way of anyone else who wanted to use your country. And because of the terrific effort that was made by you and your grandparents, your parents, that's changed. And it changed in really good ways. And so you got land rights in the Northern Territory and I was lucky enough to be in parliament when we passed that legislation uh, and then after the big long struggle in the courts, year after year, losing in the Gove land case, Millipum's case, they're told, no, the law can't acknowledge your native title. And then the High Court turned that over in Marbo after a 10 year struggle in the courts. Fantastic. And that's the thing that has made such a difference. And the things that you've told us about at this conference, the work you're doing on country, the IPAs, the agreements that you're able to make, all of these things flow from those past battles, from those achievements of changing the status of, uh, of Aboriginal people from being people who are just in the way, people who could be pushed aside to people who are stakeholders, people whose country it was, people who were the owners of the country, the traditional owners, but recognised as that. 
and all your work is able to happen and to continue and to flourish and you're capable of inspiring people. You know, uh, I was lucky enough to be around when BHP was, BHP Foundation was negotiating the 10 Deserts proposal. And that's a pretty amazing proposal. I mean, $20 million from a corporation. And the extraordinary thing to me was that when after working out that very complicated agreement, it was sent to us, a note from the BHP Foundation said, it is with joy, it is with joy that we send you this information that the agreement is now signed. Joy, not we're happy, not we're pleased. No, it's with joy. And when in Canberra, that project was launched in Parliament House, the old Parliament House, the representative of the foundation used that same word. She said in a podium like this, she was standing at a podium like this and she said, it, this, it is with joy that I'm here today. And, and that, I talk about that because what that means is that what you do on country is able to move the hearts of Australians, not of just Aboriginal Australians, but of other Australians, of the broader community. And that's, that's your great strength. That's a great achievement. And I would say to those of you who have hosted me on your country, thank you very much for giving me a chance to uh, actually experience that. The other positive thing that I, another positive thing that I think is really important, and this was reflected in what Minister Ken Wyatt said to you, is that you have established a terrific reputation. You know, mostly when we hear news about the desert, it's bad news. It's news about things that have gone wrong in the desert. But the news that is consistently good news is the work you do. And Minister Wyatt talking a couple of days ago uh, to you at this conference said that the reputation, the Ranger program had a great reputation. And that means that he's got something strong to talk about in government. And it's a terrific thing. And I acknowledge, by the way, the contribution that was made by Northern Star Mining in its work, in working with you, with some of you, to develop ranger programs. That's the sort of thing that has enabled the reputation of rangers to grow. And that's a terrific strength. And I can only say that the sort of things that you've shown me as I've attended this, this conference, the work you're doing on country, the messages that you've put on video and so on, these are things that are really important because you've got to keep getting those messages out. You've got to keep telling the rest of Australia that this is good stuff, that it works, and it's, uh, we should have more of it. So all of that is, is really positive. And I think that it's really important to stop and think about it in, in a couple of different ways. And one of the ways to think about it is to remember that the, the gains that were made through land rights and native title were never given to you easily. If you were around at the time of the land rights struggle, it was really pretty awful. It was pretty ugly. It was pretty ugly because of the way we resisted your requests to acknowledge your title, your, your traditional ownership. People were arrested. People went to jail. At the time that I was minister, back in the time of Nukumba, I think the worst time of my life actually, really good people were taken by the police, arrested and thrown into jail. And I, I go back to that bad time in your lives and my life, 
because it's important to remember that nothing good just happens. Everything you want to, all the good things you want to happen on your country from now on will not just happen. They will only happen if you make them happen. And they will only happen if you work with partners, whether it's Northern Star Mining, whether it's the BHP Foundation, whether it's with governments, through IPAs, uh, in various ways that you have to work with government. Don't expect that you will get the good things happening on your country without you. I went and listened to Minister Ben Wyatt yesterday morning, NAIDOC, big NAIDOC celebration in Perth. And right at the end of his speech, I got the copy, I got it from him because I thought it was quite an interesting speech with lots of things I might want to talk about. But he did say something right at the end that I thought he said, in talking about all the things that they were doing, he said, it's not a sustainable solution, the complete solution. That has to come from Aboriginal people. And I thought when he said that, that's a really important message for this conference. Government's important, industry is important, the country is important, but the most important thing is you. And it is what you do and what you fight for and what you achieve that will make a difference, not something from outside. Now, Yesterday, um, I was quite moved when uh, Nabaru Rose said just before we went to lunch that it was really important to put the deserts on the map and that the governments need to know about us. And I really liked what Nabaru Rose said because I think it was an important point to make. And I think the, it's an important thing for your future success that you understand why it's difficult at times to get governments to listen to you, why it's hard sometimes to get governments to behave in a sensible way. In my view, governments for very, very seldom behave in a sensible way with respect to the desert. I thought it might help to put up a, a picture of Australia, a, a map of Australia. And if you have a look at that map, I just want to say a couple of things about it, which explains why I think you have to be very strategic and you have to be very strong. You all recognise that picture of Australia and you could all say roughly where your country is on that map. And the coloured bits on the map are telling you where the people of Australia live. And the darker the colour, the brown bits, are where most of the people of Australia live. They live in Perth, they live in Melbourne, they live in Sydney, they live in Brisbane, they live in those coastal cities in Queensland. Uh, you can only just see Tasmania, but Again, the same thing. Most people live in the cities. And the lighter shading, the, the less dense brown, are the areas where you've got a few more people, but not many. And the light coloured part, the big part of the map, is where you live. And that's your country, and that's the country that I talked about a lot of it I've been able to go and have a look at and to be told about it by you. And the problem is that government and politics is about people. And the governments of Australia are largely made up of people who live on the coast. And they are naturally concerned about their business. It's not your business they're concerned about, it's their business. 
And so the governments, the loudest voices that governments hear are the voices of where they get elected, of what keeps them in government. And the other thing about that map is that if you look at the state boundaries, you can see that your country is sort of in the backyard. It's out of sight and it's usually out of mind. And that's not because people are bad people. It's not because you're bad people. It's because that's the way things are. That's the way government works. It listens to the people that elect it. And so you have that disadvantage. And that's why you've got to make a really big effort to say, well, how do we get over that disadvantage? Well, the first way you do it is by having an IDA. The really important thing about the IDA is that it's trying to provide a voice for the desert. Um, I used to chair something called Desert Knowledge Australia in Alice Springs. And we did a lot of work on this. And we said, the trouble is no one can hear what the people of the desert are saying. Now, at the moment, it's very fashionable to talk about, there's a lot of talk about voices. And in fact, the government in Canberra is saying that it's going to have a voice for Aboriginal people, a national voice. And there's a consultation going to start probably early next year or late this year, where they'll say, well, this is going to be the voice. Is this the right way to have a voice for the Aboriginal people? And that's going to bring a job for the IDA, I think, because that voice is more likely to represent the Aboriginal people who live in those dark bits of the map and the people who live in the white bits of the map, the bits where there aren't as many people. That's your country. And so I think it's really important to see that one of the things that you're going to have to struggle with and to fight for and to do the same hard fighting that your parents and grandparents did for land rights and native title to make sure that your voice is one of the voices which is clearly heard in these structures. And I hope that the IDA will work and I will certainly be very happy to work with the IDA on this, that you make sure that you are not forgotten in that process because that's something that is going to happen and it's going to happen with or without you, and it should happen with you. Now, again, if you want to influence things, listen carefully to what the politicians say, because sometimes they mean what they say. And one of the things which Minister Ken Wyatt, the minister who spoke to you two days ago, is very consistent about talking about is that he says, look, it's all very well to have a national voice, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm just saying this is the sort of thing he says. It's all we want to have a national voice, but I want to hear local and regional voices. Now, if there's a message, a single message that I've heard from Minister Wyatt, most consistently since he's been the minister, it's that one. He wants to hear local and regional voices. Now, I can't talk about the work that I've been involved in with the Commonwealth in trying to come up with some designs of voices because all that we've been told, we can't talk about it till it's all announced by the government. But I can say that there's an understanding that there will need to be local and regional voices too. I can say that, and this is very public, that some Aboriginal people have fought very hard to get governments to accept that they should work in partnership with you. And particular, um, the peak organisations have got an agreement with all of the governments of Australia that they will work in partnership. In closing the gap, it's called, you would have heard of that, you work in partnership with Aboriginal people and with their organisations. Now, the words are there, the job, the struggle you have is to make sure that governments behave the way the words say, because often the words are there, but the behaviour is not. And so I think that you will have a job to do to convince governments 
that the voices of the desert must be heard equally clearly as the voices of the people on the coast. That is a job that you will have to do in the next 12 months. And it's a job that I think will be very important to your long-term success. The other thing that is really important is that governments have now started talking about partnerships. And we've heard talk of partnerships at this conference. The more you can develop partnerships with governments, with private enterprise, with companies, with corporations, with charitable organisations, with non-government organisations, the better you will be, the more likely you are to succeed. And so I do commend the um, opportunity that you take every opportunity you can to create those partnerships. I attended one of the discussions involving um, some of your coordinators and they were talking with the Commonwealth representative that attended that meeting about the need to get stronger connections between what you're doing and the public servants. That sort of work has to continue. Now, This is where I found, why I found thinking about what I want to say to you difficult. It's really important to celebrate. It's really important to be proud of what you're doing. What you're doing is important. What you're doing is very good. What you're doing about the environment matters to everybody. What you're doing can inspire support from people like the BHP Foundation. It can lead the minister to say, this is one of the really good things. Uh, it can lead people, the minister to say that what you are doing in terms of fire management is respected and will influence the way governments behave on that issue. So you, 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 you should not in any way stop doing what you're doing. You need to do it just better and better and more and more. What, what troubles me, and I, I, I do want to be straight with you, I think there is nothing worse than bullshit. And I'm afraid there's a lot of bullshit in the way we deal with Aboriginal people. We say things and we don't do them. We say things we don't mean. We, we're not straight. An old white lady in Alice Springs wrote a book saying, all white men are liars was the name of the book. And I was pretty cross when I, she said it to me to read, but then I think she was right. She was right that in a sense, we often don't deliver on what we say. And when I look at the situation of communities in Central Australia, in remote Australia, I feel very sad. I think what is done in CDP is really awful. I think it is bad. When I see the withdrawal of the Commonwealth from housing funding, when I see the withdrawal of the Commonwealth from uh, essential service funding, when I see the general diminishing of government support for remote communities, and I see what Ben Wyatt, Minister Wyatt talked about in his speech, when I see the statistics on imprisonment, when I see the statistics on child removal, when I see the statistics on poverty, I feel sick, I feel really bad. And in a way, those things are why what you are doing is so important. Because in what I think is quite a bleak overall picture, what you are doing is the most positive thing in the desert. It's the most successful thing in the desert. From what I've seen of your work, it's the one thing which makes my heart feel good again about what's happening in Australia. And so 
All I can say is that you should go on building those relationships that you've built. You should go on building the admiration that there is out there in the community for your work, the respect for it, the understanding of it, because that will be a foundation for changing the other things that are wrong. Your voice is going to be really important. Your voice will be very easily overlooked unless you make sure it is not overlooked. The next six months indeed will be quite important in ensuring that your voice is an important part of the way the national voice and the local and regional voices are being shaped. And I think that you should use all of the allies that you can find to make sure that you are not forgotten, that you are not ignored, that this fantastic part of what makes Australia, Australia, you, your country, your environment, is something which prospers and is enhanced. I want, I want to express my gratitude to you for letting me sit in on this conference. I've enjoyed watching what you are doing. I've enjoyed getting a little more understanding of what you are doing and a little more understanding of what your country means to you and what it means to me. So um, congratulations. Congratulations on the alliances you have won, the support you have attracted, but please understand that the struggles of the past, which got native title, land rights, the Racial Discrimination Act, the things which have shifted the boundaries of activity were all only won by Aboriginal people being strong, determined, vociferous, vocal, prepared to stand up and shout when necessary. And I am sure that if you are able to continue to show the courage and the fortitude and the strength that your parents and grandparents showed, that we will continue to make Australia an even better place in the future than it is at present. Thank you very much. I don't know what to say after that other than mm. thank you. It was extremely powerful. Um, it's amazing to have someone that's been around this long, who's sat in for three days, uh, being able to speak with such passion to all of you. Um, I don't really think I can do justice to summing that up, Fred. I think you've done it. So very powerful. Now, Prue, did you want to say any words? Yeah, I'd like to thank you, Fred. I've known Fred for many years. I've lived on a community Yandy era, and Fred knows my old man, and he's been out there. And when Yandy era didn't have any, you know, development happening, and your speech, Fred, you know, nearly brought tears to my eyes. Now, thank you for. Um, a speech that's really, really touched my heart. And, you know, that's why people, you know, we don't need to believe every word the government, the state or the Commonwealth tells us. I've experienced it. You know, I'm always having a say in regards to royalties mining on our country. Guess who takes the big chunk? It's the state government. And we have to fight for what we want to get from companies. So it's automatically goes to the state. And in, you know, and our people are still, as Fred mentioned, we're still out there living in poverty. So don't, you know, I would like to say to people, don't believe everything the government says because they're very clever. That's how they got into parliament, you know, telling people this and then you don't see them once they get in. They don't want to know us until the next election. 
So I would um, encourage people to, to, I guess, store this precious, the speech that Fred has done, given us today. You know, I certainly will treasure it and I will always go back to it, you know, reflect, go back to it. Oh yeah, this is what Fred said, you know. And so I use many quotes and, you know, people that, non-Aboriginal people that raise stuff, I always keep, excuse me, keep that in my, in my mind, you know, I use all that examples. And like what Fred mentioned then, you know, we have to show to the government, state government, Commonwealth, we mean business. Like if you want to go and develop and put up an infrastructure on your country, they want to see it first, firsthand, they want to see what you've done. You know, that's why I say to my group, don't think of asking for funding first. We got to prove ourselves to the government that we are doing it. Once they can see that we're doing it, then they'll, you know, start giving us whatever, how much of the funds. But that's how government operates. So as you people can understand how we got this far with IDA, because, you know, as a group, we're very, very strong. My old fella used to stay, say, but if you're just few people, it's like a very weak, you know, the trees or twigs, what will what I say? They can break easy. But when we're in a big group of people, like the IDA, we, we are very hard to break down because we will stand up, all of us, and, and you know, say the right things and fight for our right. So please keep all that message, what Fred has given us today, because it will come very, very handy in the end. Thank you, Fred. Thanks, Fred. If I could just say, um, I'm sorry I can't attend the rest of the conference, but I have some sorry business today. I have a funeral to go to. But um, thank you very much for the privilege of being able to attend the conference. And I just want to say that the IDA would have many supporters because of the importance of what you're trying to do, the value of what you're trying to do. There are many people who would want to support you and you should expect that support and you but you will get it if you show yourselves to be strong and thank you very much Nabu Rose for your comments.